Welcome to Safe Space, the podcast where we help conscious leaders to 10x your impact, confidence, and freedom. Today, we are going to be talking about main character energy. Olivia, how does this come about? How do you discover main character energy and what does it mean to you? So main character energy for me is understanding that I am the creator in my life in every aspect of my life, starting with my health, my mindset, my business, and my relationships, right? So knowing, you know, when you watch a movie, there's so many characters in the movie, but there's only one main character. So everything kind of revolves around that person, not in an egoistic way, but in a way where you feel like things are always happening for you and understanding and surrendering and taking charge, you know, using the whole, using your power to create impact, to have that confidence that I can create whatever I want and to, you know, feel safe to get out of your comfort zone and be willing to expand. I love that. It feels like when you were saying that, it feels like power is one of the main things that we do. We kind of take our power back we sort of insource our power so that we can be self-directed in life, you know, making our own choices, realizing that we are in some way responsible, that we do have some power to create what we want. Is that what it means to you? Right. Because a lot of people, including myself in the past, are in victim consciousness, right? This happened to me. My mom did this, my dad. You know, we can just blame our parents all we want. And we are the adults in our lives right now. It's our time. Like it's our time to take charge and do whatever it takes. If it's the healing, you know, to reparent ourselves and to really reprogram our subconscious mind to heal our body, to create that confidence so that we can use full of your power. You know, I used to also say, you know, like I, he, you know, this person did my light or, you know, oh, I gave my power away. But right now, I believe that, you know, nobody can take your power. And even you cannot give it away. Like, you are the power. You just use it, you know, use less of it at times. So it's about having that confidence to go full throttle and embody your power so you can use it to full capacity. I love that. For me, when I think of main character energy, it's a, something I play around with sometimes. I, I feel like it relates to the living vicariously through others thing. That would sort of be the opposite, right? Is we sort of outsource some of our qualities instead of doing things where like looking at other people, like we gain some satisfaction from watching another person do what they do on Instagram or whatever, rather than like taking it back in and being like, you know what? I'm going to live my best life instead of whatever, right? So I feel like that's a big part of it. Um, yeah, is that, would you say that's the enemy, that's one of the enemies of main character energy is like living vicariously through others? I think it's part of it. You know, a lot of people talk about jealousy in a very negative ba- way, but I was listening to Marianne Williamson, one of her books, and she was just explaining it's, you know, what we feel is more like envy, you know, and you need like more than three people to feel jealous because it's like this person is giving more attention to the other person than you. That's more jealousy. When you look at another person, it's more like you envy that person. So, but we don't say that, right? Um, And envy is different than jealousy. So when you look at someone and you look at their success, I think the magic is when you see that as a mirror, right? If something or somebody is getting your attention and you're looking up to that and you're being like wowed by it and you're watching it, you keep swiping like, what is this person about? That means that there is something within you that you have not activated yet. There is something within you that like waiting for you, a part of you waiting for you to be, you know, to be seen, to be heard, to be activated so that you can also embody that, right? Because you cannot see it if you don't have it within you. So using that in me in a positive way and going into self-exploration and saying, what do I want to create that is similar to that? Yeah, I think of it like outsourcing power, right? It's like, 
waiting is and what you're showing is a really cool like mirror technique kind of where you realize oh my god i'm outsourcing my power i'm waiting for this person to do this thing whereas actually what i really want ideally is to do that myself i want to bring that in and i want to be that i can think of several times where i have uh say improved my business or my financial success and impact therefore uh, just by improving my relationship and the way that I was giving power away in a relation in our in our intimate relationships, we end up giving power away sometimes. It's not just there, but that's just one example that has helped me. And I realized like I was really yeah, I was giving power away. And what it means is like all the things that we wait on other people to do, all those things that we're like expecting them to do, Kind of like a business owner who has delegated to somebody and you're waiting on them to do the thing. Instead, we need to insource it. We need to take it back, right? And just be the producer of the thing. It is more empowering to do it that way. And when it comes to being the main character, that's sort of what it is. Now, we can't do that with everything in life. There is time and place to delegate, but we can do that with power and not just giving it away. What do you think? Yeah, and a part of it is just also like being magnetic you know you said something about that like you know when you give your power away you're basically saying that person is the main character in my life right yes yeah. so you should always <laughs> yeah so like you should always like remember and remind yourself daily whatever you need to do like maybe an affirmation or like whatever practice in the morning that i am the creator like i am the main character in my life no matter who you know you know if i'm in a relationship if i'm in a business relationship if i'm a mom doesn't matter you know people we tend to people please to try and get what we want because we feel like less than right so that's where the healing comes in and understanding your own self-esteem, self-worth, self -worth and developing your self-esteem, it contributes to the confidence. And then you understand and you embody that you're the main character. And then you have you don't have to think about it. Oh, is this person the main character? Should I give my power away to this person or that person, right? So that's when you're embodying the main character energy. Even like, you know, my son, yeah, right? Yeah, okay, I'm a mom. I have to, you know, I get to be a mom, but at the same time, like I hear a lot of women like have mom guilt, especially the entrepreneurs, business owners, and feel like, oh my God, like I work, my son is home, I feel bad. No, like you're the main character, right? And yeah. you need to train literally everybody in your life to accept that. You need to teach people how to treat you, right? And when you see yourself as the main character, other people will see you as the main character as well. That is so true. That's a frame. It's a beautiful frame. I've been practicing this under and calling it leadership. That's sort of the title I've been calling it for myself whenever I practice this, but it's, it's just that. And for me, it came really strongly as an important topic because I am very empathic and a lot, pretty much all my clients are and all my collaborators, like all of us here listening if you're listening to this you're probably very empathic what does that mean it means that our energy go and our mind go out and we are able to feel and perceive other people's energy we can get a clue of what is happening in their mind we sort of sense how they're feeling that is our energy leaving us and going to them that is the opposite of insourcing that is an example of sort of outsourcing right now a or it's 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 a it's a first step of outsourcing and then what happens with this, you you know, you mentioned people pleasing. It's just like that, right? We get a, we're very empathic. We get a sense, oh, this person's happy. And we think, oh, they're, my happiness somehow is tied to this person's happiness. Oh, this person's unhappy. My, my unhappiness is somehow related to this person's unhappiness. So I can't, I can't let them feel unhappy. I have to make sure they're happy. And that becomes an obsession. And then you're working on them as being the, the happiness and suffering machine that you're trying to fix all the time rather than yourself. And so that is the, the, empath, the empath tendency to do that is empathy is a superpower. Empathy is not the problem. Empathy is a superpower. It is extremely important to be able to feel what other people are feeling. Even animals can do this. Athletes can do this. Billionaires can do it. Like, 
everybody, you're like, you don't have to be spiritual to feel someone's energy. But what we do need is to be self-directed. Mm-hmm. We need to be able to pull it back into, into remember, like you said, it's a reminder thing, right? Like I am the leader. I'm the main character. I'm the one doing this. And I can give an example for myself of having t- uh, teaching in classrooms as I was a substitute teacher and my dad and my brother are both like school teachers. And I can tell you that if you don't take charge of the class, one of the kids will, or the class becomes completely unruly. And that is not good for them. It is better for them, for someone who's responsible and conscious, a conscious leader, in other words, to take charge. And we can do that in our home. That's how I think of it for myself. We can do that in our home. We can do that in our life, in our business, in our relationships. We can be the conscious leader there. We can be the main character where we sort of decide, we realize this ship goes better. The, the trip goes better. The destination is reached more successfully if I'm in charge than if they're in charge, right? And I just have a lot of experience of practicing like not using other people's emotions or feelings or opinions as signposts for where I should go. I I figured that out for myself through my own spiritual practice, through my own reflection, through anything that I can, through conscious conversations with people like you. I, this is how I determine my direction, but then I don't let another person's feeling or emotion or opinion or a knock at the door or the dog barking or anything. I don't try to, I don't take my direction from circumstances. I take my direction from deep thought and principles. And then I follow that. And if they are useful for others, I try to bring other people into it too. I, I've i worked with tons of entrepreneurs, especially like conscious ones, especially women. It is a huge problem. Like you said, the mom guilt thing, that is a, a killer. How can you like, how can you run a business if you can't even run your house? Right. And so I agree with everything you said. Yeah. And that's where also the, you know, safety comes in, right? Like you said something like that's not good for the students, right? When you're teaching, if the teacher is not in charge, the, the students don't feel safe. And it goes in the house. Like if I am not in charge, my son is not going to feel safe. He needs a container. Of course, he's a child. I let him be himself. I don't try to like make mold him or make him, you know, like control him. And I need to hold a container where he can be himself, right? And when you talk about leadership, it's like learning to lead ourselves first is so important. We learn to lead ourselves so we can lead others. So we can, you know, we need to learn how to create safety and trust within to be good leaders for ourselves. And then we can create that container of safety and trust with the others so we can lead them. So we can lead our family, we can lead our clients. And they can also feel safe in that container and then they stay with you, right? And that's how you create an impact. Because if people don't feel safe, if you don't feel safe within yourself, you cannot create safety for other people. And if people don't feel safe with you, what are they going to do? They're they're just going to leave or it's going to be a whole mess. Yeah. People feel safe with structure, right? If we're the one providing structure, people feel safe with that. They can relax with that. Children, for example, love structure, right? They don't feel safe without it, really. Right? And so it's important, like, and that's true of our clients in containers. Like, we sometimes think our clients are, like, so sophisticated, but they're like children, too. And they want safety. They want a container. They want structure. They want to know what to expect. And if you can provide that, they will love it. And, you know, people are going to have, when you're a coach or healer and you have programs and stuff, your clients are going to have doubts. Some people are going to come in and they're going to tell you what they think is right. And you can create a safe space for that kind of exploration. But again, think of it like a signpost. Their doubt is a, is a question. And that question is a sign pointing somewhere. And you can decide, do I want to determine my direction based on this? In other words, should I outsource my certainty to this other person <laughs> who's confused right now? Should I outsource my confidence and let them run the ship? Why? Because they had a doubt and question. This person who's never gotten the result that I, that, you know, that they even want, that I want, like, no, we have to learn how to uh, handle those 
you know, and, and it's like bumpy waves on the ship. You have to come back to your power. And if it's a good question, you can think about it, but you should be the one to determine your own direction. For me, that's like, it feels like meditation. I know we're going to cover that in a different episode, but meditation is all about bringing your mind back, right? Focusing on something meaningful. And when your mind wanders, you bring it back. Distractions are going to try to pull you away. And when your mind wanders, you bring it back to your meaningful focus. And when you're a leader, you have you have determined your own direction. When you're the main character, you've insourced your power. You've insourced your confidence. You determine your own direction and you make your own choices you create as you said you get to create your life the way you want it and anything else in your life is like a distraction that could pull you away another person feels unhappy that you said this thing right <laughs> i saw someone write a post today she's like i deleted my last post because someone wasn't happy yeah okay that's okay sometimes but like or are you just trying it are you letting another person's anger determine your direction right a real leader might see it but then they come back to okay well what was i really doing what was my plan here and you keep coming back to that and by doing that i think we develop the qualities that we really want to like a main character in a movie or in a video game right they develop really cool qualities right they they go on adventures they get better over time they transform they collect things they have wins and we will do all that too if we can constantly bring ourselves back to whatever our plan was, whatever our direction is, that's my opinion. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're right. Um, yeah, that's why it's important to have some anchors, right? When something like that happens, you write a post from like your heart and maybe you channeled it and, you know, you just really need to be heard. You need to express that and you do. And then someone doesn't like it. That's like a good thing because, you know, you're not creating impact if you're not like you need to be repelling people as much as attracting people and if you're just because if you're trying not to if you're walking on eggshells and trying not to offend anybody you're never going to be in main character energy right because you're all going to be people pleasing people so you know someone so they don't get like offended by what you say and that's a good way to avoid you know like hold yourself back from that um being in the main character energy and i was gonna say that's why it's important to also have anchors right just really knowing your why why are you doing what you're doing if, if it's like goes for everything if you're writing that post what is your why is it aligned with your values right so when somebody says something then you're like okay you know i hear you and now let me check what is my why it's valid and now let me check if this post is aligned with my own values check 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 that's it you don't have to delete it you don't have to do anything but if you're not um grounded in that then you're going to be pulled in all directions and lose the, the control like we talked about yeah exactly i agree i was thinking the same thing if a person really did that checking process before they wrote that post they wouldn't have to delete it because they would already have determined this is on brand this is me this is what i want to do Right. So that probably means that the previous post was emotional and a main character doesn't just react emotionally to other people. They come from their own common centered place because they're clear. And then they, you know, uh, yeah, they create, they create in a unique way. So I'd love to hear like maybe some uh, ideas or tips like, you know, what do you think people can do here? I know everyone listening is get, get, like, you guys want to improve or increase your impact, right? Your healers, your coaches, your conscious business owners, you want to have bigger impact. Confidence is a big part of that. You want to be more confident, right? You want to free yourself from fear and shame and doubt and worry and all that kind of stuff. What, how can we do that? How can main character energy help us with that? I think the first thing is to get to know yourself, but just really, really on a deeper level, because, you know, growing up, you just pick up so many things that are inauthentic. So for me, it's like a process of blossoming into it. And it's like a process of like just peeling the layers of inauthenticity and just dropping anything and everything that is not aligned with your values, like we said, right? Not anything and everything that's not aligned with your why, with your purpose. 
And once you strip off those extra things that are kind of like that you're holding on to to keep yourself safe. And then, you know, when you do that and you're like, oh, I didn't die. <laughs> I didn't get eaten by a tiger, right? You Then you learn nervous system regulation. And then once you create safety and trust within yourself through somatic work, through breath work and embodiment work, and your body feels safe, your mind feels safe, then you start creating. And finding your voice, I think, is also a big part of it. Finding your unique voice. We talked about like envying other people, looking at other people, watching from the sidelines, right? It's just like making this powerful decision to really step in to your life, like to the center stage and say, that's it, right? It starts with a very powerful decision that I am the main character of my life from now on. And then, you know, making a list of things. It starts, you know, with self-love. It starts with like saying no to not only bad things, but sometimes to good things too, right? And really being able to set and enforce boundaries without feeling guilty. Like we talked about mom guilt, right? In relationships with clients, you know, there are some clients that are like really clingy and they text you and they try to, you know, like... um like you said, they're like children, they need structure, this and that, knowing how to put boundaries, even with the clients, right? So, and a lot of people I think I work with, they are already there where they're like, okay, these are my boundaries and they got crossed, they know it, but they cannot enforce it because they're still giving their power away. And then, you know, really understanding what kind of impact you want to create, right? We talk about impact, confidence, freedom so freeing yourself from anything and everything that doesn't serve you that's not authentic and then that's going to create you know a space for you to create why are you creating what is the impact you want to make right and once you get that in and you start taking action one of the misconceptions about confidence which I also had before was you know I need to feel confident to start doing something right and I learned that action builds confidence what i was missing was self-esteem so once you build up your self-esteem you don't need the confidence you know you need to just go go and do it take action and create and then the confidence will come as you start helping people and um yeah and there you are <laughs> and it's a daily practice having anchors like we said reminders and anchors and practicing it in every relationship in every area of our lives and really practicing self-love as well, because you cannot be in the main character energy from like an egoistic way, right? You need to be there from a place of self-love and confidence and self-esteem and self-worth. Like I deserve to be the main character in my life. No, we cannot hear you. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so coming from self-love and, and self-esteem, let's let's stay with that for a second. Mm -hmm. I feel like when we do this, if we actually do it well at a level that's higher than what we've previously done it before, it will trigger people in our life. <laughs> what do you think about that? How should we respond when our own self-love and, and self-esteem, which looks and feels like confidence to others, people get triggered by that right so what do you what do we do when that happens yeah that's such a good question because i struggled with that all my life like i i actually had a big mother wound and sister wound and it was hard for me to make female friends because they just were threatened by me i don't even know them right but i was having trouble making connections with women um, and I just didn't understand why they hated me. They didn't even, I was like, they don't even know me, you know, and that, you know, that, that, you know, your light triggering other people. So I think what I've done is like, there's a part that you can control and there's a second part that, you know, you cannot control. The part that I could control was to heal my mother wound and sister wound. I did, I had to do the inner work to let go of all the triggers to start feeling safe within myself. I realized I didn't feel safe around women. So it was also my energy maybe to, you know, I was just protecting myself from them. 
And once I healed the, you know, what I can control, the second part was I was around people who didn't have the same values as me. You know how they say you're average of like five people around you. So I was around a lot of people who were gossiping, who had no like interest in self-growth and creating an impact or anything like that. And their confidence depended on like material things. So I had to really take a look at who I'm surrounding myself with and slowly let those people flow out of my life and just work on myself, create safety within. And then I was able to shine my light even brighter with a lot of confidence. Then I attracted so many women. They would come to me even on like a conscious event, come over and be like, what's your name? And like, I want to be friends with you. I'm like, oh, okay. Like that's a first, like, you know, this was like four years ago. That's when I started attracting women who are, you know, who have high self-esteem because that's what my, what my vibration was. So changing myself from inside out and then vibrating. So a woman who um, who have high self-esteem like you do, like I did at the time, she didn't get tre- uh, triggered or threatened by me. She said, I want to be around her. I want to be in her energy. So she came to me and she was like, I want to be friends. I was like, sure, right? Because I also like that she spoke her truth you know she was brave enough to come up to me and talk to me I was like oh wow this person is not triggered by me she's inspired by me and you know we've been friends for four years now and she's one of my best friends still we show up for each other in such powerful ways uh and it's like she kept she told me so many times that she's so inspired by me so it's about doing the inner work and then really owning your light and knowing that you're going to be an inspiration and you're going to be the light at the end of the tunnel for the right people. I love this. There's so much in there that I want to kind of help to unpack for the listeners. I'm sure everyone's getting a lot from this. Thank you for sharing all that. One of the core themes I'm hearing is letting go as part of creating the safe space. I think I think that's the really important step that I'm hearing. It's like, we need to create that safety within ourselves so that we can create from a true centered place where we're really not emotional in a, in a negative way, where we're coming from the right places and all that, like coming from a zero, a zero spot, essentially, right? Like fully centered place. And we have to be safe, right? We have to feel safe in order to like relax into that. Right. If we have fear pulling us in a direction and guilt pulling us and concern about how this person's emotions and feelings and opinions, like that all pulls us away. And also surrounding ourselves with the wrong friends, as you said. So in my opinion, like there's a lot of letting go here that is required for creating that that zero point and that safe space. Um also you mentioned about how you know people who have boundaries and they can even communicate them, but they do not enforce them. They don't enforce their own boundaries. And in my opinion, if if the only boundary we know how to do is to say no and mean it, that is, you know, at the right time, that's a great boundary, right? That's, That's kind of what it comes down to is like the willingness to walk away, the willingness to let, the willingness to say no and mean it and to actually walk away from a thing, even if it's good, right? I've walked away from many things that are good. A boundary doesn't mean that it's not good. A boundary means that you are determining your own direction and it's not, it's not best. <laughs> it's just not the best for you. And that is a huge energetic strength. I feel like it's a muscle. It's a no muscle. We have to flex our no muscle more often. And the more we do that, the more powerful we become and the more of a leader we become, the more self-directed we become, the more people follow us and all that stuff. It all comes, in my opinion, it all comes from knowing when to say no and then actually doing it effectively and therefore doing all the letting go stages that you mentioned and therefore having that, you know, coming back to a true center where we can start to feel safe. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Letting go is a big part of it because I also being brave, right? So letting go requires being brave. And if 
you know, you want to embody main character energy, you need to be great. I remember a long time ago, we were playing a game on the beach at a friend's birthday and, you know, we were picking up these questions and answering them. And it was one of them was like, what is one word that you would describe yourself? And mine was like, the first thing came to me was brave. I've been so brave so many times in my life. Like, I don't want to go into my story right now, but it was like, you know, it's like a lot of things that I had to be brave and let go. And sometimes it can be scary, right? So creating that safety for yourself while you're letting go is the secret. And yeah, yeah, you you have to let go. And I, I actually had to, yeah, being okay with the worst case scenario, right? So when I was letting my friends go, I was like, what if I don't have any friends left, right? And I think at some point that that is what happened. I don't have any friends because none of my friends felt aligned. You know, I kept, I started saying no to things that they were inviting me to because I'm like, it's just like, I need to really, I value my time and energy. It's really, you know, it's more expensive than money. Like my time and energy is my highest asset. And that's how I got to say no. And I got to say, you know, let go. And by being okay with not having friends, at least for a while, helped me because if I was scared that I'm gonna lose everybody I'm not gonna have friends that I'm gonna cling on to the wrong people so yeah embracing the worst case scenario as a means for being brave enough to to let go and say no that's it that's really like I teach I discovered like my own formula for letting go of fear and I teach it to people occasionally and that's that's like the, the pivotal step that everybody misses in, in letting go of fear is actually embracing the worst case scenario, being okay with whatever we're afraid of, right? For example, what if I have no friends? What if this person hates me? What if they don't like me anymore? What if I, oh, what if I do this and I make a big mistake, right? What if I have to be alone or whatever it is that we're trying to be brave about? You just think about what is it that I'm that I'm avoiding? What's that worst case fear that I'm that is bothering me and paralyzing me? And we need to start to look at it and embrace it and just feel okay with it, accept it, surrender to it, et cetera. Not as a truth, but as a possibility. I think that's the key for me. Is like you don't people when I tell this to people, if I don't say that, they're oftentimes like, oh, but I don't want to accept it. it. I don't want it to happen. But it's not, it's not going to happen just because you're not afraid of it anymore. <laughs> like fear manifests. Fear okay. manifests. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But like the things you do to avoid pain bring you the most pain. Yeah. Like, right. This is like one of the biggest lessons I learned. Yes. It's like a hangover, like a withdrawal, right? When you're when you have a withdrawal from a drug, you seek the drug. The drug is what caused you the pain, but yet in pain, you seek more of the thing that gives you more pain. And these are the micro addictions that we're all hooked on. Other people's feelings, other people's approval, things not going wrong, my comfort zone. We're all we're hooked on these things, right? It's an addiction cycle. And as you said, we're conditioned to avoid pain. That's that's really what we're all scared of is future pain. It's just, it's just a, a particular flavor of future pain that we feel we're headed towards, that we feel is uh, imminent for us. We're on a collision course with this particular flavor of future pain, and there's nothing we can do about it, and then we get paralyzed. And if we were to just embrace it and be like, you know what? Like, I know my fear is helping to create this in my life. This is not a truth, it's a possibility. So if I embrace the possibility of this happening, my, my fear goes, actually. The emotional response of fear, this heightened emotion, this turbulent mind, we can't even think clearly. Like that's what, if if we're honest, this is what happens to us. We're about to go make a social media post. We're about to launch a program. We're about to say no to our partner or former partner from the thing that they asked for. And like, we're gonna put the boundary or, or with our child. We're afraid of something. And in that moment of choice, we are not thinking clearly, right? The logic doesn't work. 
it doesn't matter how how logical we try to be it won't work we have to solve it in an emotional way first and the emotional solution is just what you said we have to become okay with whatever we are afraid of and not as a truth but as a possibility and then our emotional intensity drops and now we can think clearly and now logic will work and be like oh the world won't hate me for making this post or oh my marriage won't and because I put a boundary this one time or my child will hate me forever because I say no to ice cream or whatever it is. Right. And then the logic will work because we've already done the emotional work. That's my experience. Thank you yeah. for bringing that up. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And the reason why I think it's important for people to understand why they're so afraid of feeling the pain. Right. And why is it something that we are aware of? Like what, why? Because if we never felt that pain before, like you cannot avoid or like be afraid of something that, you know, we just know how painful the pain is, right? I feel like we all felt that pain, you know, when you say, no, what are you scared of? Fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, right? And we felt those things as children from our parents and at the time we didn't have the tools maybe we didn't have the words we didn't have the support to express ourselves and to heal and those pains that we felt in our childhood left an imprint in our nervous system in our subconscious mind in our whole body so sometimes that you know the work that we do you know logic doesn't work because it's in your body that's why it was a missing piece in my practice in my coaching practice because I was rewiring my brain you know and I was still getting you know I was still stuck with a few things in my life few areas in my life and I was like I don't understand I've done so much work why is this happening <clears throat> and then I'm sure a lot of people are maybe here familiar with the book the body keeps the score right all these pains and traumas in the past they left an imprint in our body so the only the mindset work doesn't work. You know, we have to bring the nervous system on board to be able to pass through these fears, to overcome these fears. 100%. It's, that, it's all back to that safety, right? Getting your nervous system to calm down. That's what mm -hmm. breath work can do, meditation, and even the fear work, right? When you can, like, that's an approach that I've taken, obviously, like, you know, I lived at a temple for many years. I lost all my friends too when I was at the temple for five years. And I, it gave me a really cool starting point. I got to start fresh, right? I got to start my entrepreneurship journey without all these hooks in me, right? And I really feel like a lot of people need to take to invest that time to just like let go of some things, be okay with being alone, right? As you say, I think, there's a deeper meaning to the, to, the, to the pain that we interpret, right? That future pain, the reason why we're scared of it is we interpret, I'm gonna be alone forever, I'm unworthy, I will not be loved, I will be abandoned forever. There's a meaning there that we're interpreting that is not true. And um, wow, this is amazing. So I know that breath work is a powerful tool for you that you've used. Uh, to create the safety within yourself and your body. I think you have other emotional tools. I'm looking forward to exploring those on, on other episodes of this. What would you say to the listeners now is like, like a last step or a couple last steps to kind of embody this main character energy so they can get more impact, income, uh, confidence, and so on? I think it's to write down and get clear on what that means to them right? What does impact mean to you and your why? You know, why do you want to be confident? Like, what are you going to get from that? Like, what is the, what is your why? Getting really clear on your why, on your, and your values that's going to go along with it is the first big step. Wonderful. Amazing. Because as I've been saying this phrase, self-directed, of course, what are we self-directed towards? But it's our why, right? Mm -hmm. So, Wonderful, great advice. Uh, anything else people should look forward to that are listening um, to this? We have so many juicy new uh, episodes coming up about okay. you know, up to 10x your impact, confidence, and freedom. So stay tuned. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.